Wherever you are, you can almost always hear animals. But the reasons how and why they make their sounds are as diverse as the noises themselves. The start of a fascinating story of adaptation. Whether they are bellowing a challenge, shouting a warning, flirting, navigating, or even hunting with their voices. The soundtrack of nature brings our world to life. The unmistakable sound of Africa. The bellowing territorial roar of lions. Sounds help define places and animals. They enrich landscapes and have the power to transport us in our minds to exotic locations. But to animals, they're a survival tool, as complex and diverse as any other part of the animal kingdom. Lions make the sounds by stretching enlarged folds or vocal cords in their larynx to resonate passing air. The bigger flaps vibrate more and so make more noise for less effort. Both sexes will join in and as the tidal wave of sound pushes out across the plains, it will warn other lions that this territory is taken and that the residents are not afraid to fight to defend it. The roar is said to be 25 times louder than a gas-powered lawnmower, 114 decibels, and can be heard from eight kilometers away. It's vital that the pride proclaims a home range. They need to make sure they have enough food resources to sustain their families, and the warnings will stop rival males from coming in and killing their cubs. A young male didn't heed the warning. He's looking for new territory. This can only lead to trouble. Other pride leaders rush in to help. They will make sure the trespasser has a lesson he won't forget. He begs for mercy. the attackers relent. They sent Mark, reinforcing their territorial boundaries. Lions produce a range of sounds, warning growls, contented purrs, and grumbles to tell off naughty cubs. Only the territorial roars are bold and long-ranging. 
Some of the sounds of nature are hard to miss. In northern forests in autumn, the air is full of tension and the echoing bellow of red deer. This is the rut. It doesn't take much deciphering to figure out what this call means. The guttural bellowing is a challenge to other males. The bigger the stag, the deeper the roar. It says, I'm big and bad, mess with me if you dare. It's a show of bravado. Each of the cocky competitors hoping to impress the females through their fearless invitations to fight. The stags strain their voice boxes. The further back the larynx can stretch, the more impressive the sound. This male gets lucky. So far, no one bigger has returned the challenge. Seemingly the best option, the hind invites him to mate. But then a bigger stag appears on the scene. The usurped stag tries to herd his females away. But this is a much bigger male and he soon gives up. When two really big bellowers arrive, the younger stags might as well throw in the towel. They watch from the wings. Normally, smaller animals try to avoid a fight and back down to their superiors. But if the challenges seem evenly matched, there is only one way to settle the score. The branched antlers are designed to lock together. It's like bracing for an arm wrestle. But if either opponent loses his grip, he could be skewered on one of the sharp spikes. The stakes are high, and the wrestlers can't afford distractions. Once a winner is decided, he quickly lays down the law. claiming access to the females for himself. The bellows of passion are only used during the rut, but deer have several other calls and they vary from one species to the next. like the barking alarm call of a roe doe when she sees a fox. A pond in a northern forest is the stage for a singing contest. Nothing says spring is coming to the swamp more than a frog song. There are nearly 5,000 species of frog in the world, 
and each has its own unique voice. Pouches on the front or side of the throat are inflated, creating an amplifier, air that can vibrate and increase the intensity of sound. The calls advertise the presence of the performer in an attempt to attract a mate. Pond frogs and fire-bellied toads seem to try and outperform one another. It just takes one songster to get the party started, and soon the pond's buzzing. It's an amphibian orgy. Each male fighting its way to try and grab a single female. In the chaos, there's even a bit of confusion. A gate-crashing common toad gets more than it's bargained for. More appropriate coupling leads to spawning, with the females releasing hundreds of eggs and the males releasing sperm. It's a breeding bonanza, all triggered by sound. Of course, there can be downsides to drawing attention to yourselves. A frog killer joins the party. The attack cools things down for the spawners and the pond seems to fall silent. But just because human ears can't hear anything, doesn't mean there isn't any noise. European pond turtles share this pool. They don't seem to have much to say for themselves. However, recent research has revealed that turtles chat to one another with sounds that are too low frequency for humans to hear. So far, no one is sure just what they are saying. Communication can play a role not just in organizing animals, but even changing landscapes. Like turtles, elephants use low frequency sounds to communicate with each other. Deep rumbles that are below human hearing. They might even hear each other through their feet, picking up the vibrations caused. Low frequency sounds travel much further than high frequency ones, so elephants can keep in touch over huge distances. The sounds have been recorded from nine kilometers away. especially useful for forest elephants in the dense jungles of Central Africa. More audible sounds help communication within a family group, the related females and their calves. They can also be used in courtship or threat by the huge solitary bulls. The long-range calls can draw in friends, other families, and where there is good food, water or mineral resources, many elephants may gather. The pachyderm parties combine a great deal of animal weight that can be enough to flatten vegetation 
creating forest clearings and opportunities for other animals. In the dense jungle, communication is vital. This is one of the loudest voices, the unmissable music of the howler monkey. Every morning, the monkeys announce their presence. Calls help to keep the family together. And make sure neighboring monkeys know not to trespass. The animal kingdom makes a lot of noise about territory. To attract mates and keep rivals at bay, field crickets construct funnel-shaped homes the wide mouth of the burrow is an amp that rebounds sounds that are produced by rubbing their wing cases together, cranking up the volume. The sounds are meant to be appealing to the opposite sex and to deter trespassers. But this time, a rival male has appeared on the scene. The sounds of nature that we treasure for their beauty are in fact acts of aggression. The dawn chorus, a cacophony of birdsong, is made up of lots of little warriors shouting their war cries. They are proclaiming their territories and telling other birds to stay away. about 10,000 species of birds, and each has its own signature style. Some enhance their sound with theater. The glossy male rifle bird has spotted a potential mate. She's busy feeding, so he's going to have to work hard to get her attention. Iridescent plumage isn't enough to dazzle her. First, he must clear a stage. He clears his throat, readying for the performance of a lifetime. A young male is the supporting act, 
and starts warming up the crowd. He doesn't have the skills to dazzle. Now the headliner's ready to take the limelight. He begins his song. It's hardly poetry. He's no musician, but what he lacks in voice, he adds in drama. He's one of the birds of paradise, and as with his cousins, it's all about putting on a good show. The female's intrigued by his headless act. Then back from the dead, he pumps himself up ready for the finale. She's potty in his hands. When many birds are singing, it can be hard to be heard above the crowd. So each bird has its own unique call, and some have learned some impressive sound engineering. The lyrebird has the best of both worlds, stunning plumage and a spectacular singing voice. But its real skill is mimicry. It's a copycat, stealing the sounds of other birds, or pretty much anything else it hears and doing a mashup, creating the most intricate, complex calls of the forest. No female could get bored of his lineup. With such a wide range of sounds, his performance is different every time and he jazzes them up with some fancy footwork. With his dramatic costume and vocal range, who could resist? It's a sellout show. For his finale, he whips out the big guns and does his best Star Wars impression. Some sounds are used like a dating app, helping to find the perfect partner. For the lyrebird, it's to penetrate the deep forest, but to birds that are only 18 centimeters long, even a meadow is like a dense jungle.
A male quail lets the ladies know that he's arrived in town. The main challenge for mating success is finding each other. He doesn't have a particularly beautiful voice, but she doesn't seem to mind. That's all it takes. There are many ways to make sounds, so animals don't have to depend on nice voices. When a white stork returns to its rooftop nest, his partner engages him with a romantic serenade. It's the love song that keeps their commitment to each other strong. But it's not sung. It's more of a percussion performance, clapping their bills together. The peacock's a master performer. He has a voice and, of course, eye-catching plumage, but his act is enhanced with sound. When his two-meter tail is fanned, he shakes it. The vibrations make a buzzing sound, a rattle which, combined with the waving eye markings of his tail, seem to hypnotize the ladies. Young males practice. They can certainly rattle, but they just don't have what it takes to get the girls excited. The eyes have it. The peacocks use sound to be seen, but other animals use it to see. Bats have very poor eyesight. They sleep by day and are active at night. With lives in the dark, there is very little point in good vision. Instead, they see with sound. Like naval sonar, they make high-pitched sounds and then listen to echoes bouncing off objects in their path. Nature's echolocation. The system is so refined that they can aim with precision at tiny moths, even identifying different species just from the echo they produce. Most of the sounds they make are too high frequency for human ears to hear and are only audible to us after they have been recorded and slowed down. Their brains interpret the sounds to create an image of their environment, 
mapping the land around them and enabling them to navigate tight spaces in total darkness. There's a marine version of echolocation as well, the sonar of whales and dolphins. High-pitched clicks scan the surroundings, guiding the dolphin through the murk. The sounds can probe the seaweed and even the sand beneath it to reveal fish and other marine creatures they can eat. Like bats, dolphins can identify other animals just from returning echoes. In fish, it's the size and position of their swim bladder, a pocket of air that gives them away. But even more powerful, the sounds can penetrate objects, detecting differences in density, a bit like an X-ray. The sounds are produced by squeezing air through chambers in the blowhole. They're refined and amplified as they move forwards through an oily organ called a melon, the rounded bulge at the front of the head. It channels the sound into powerful, even directional beams. Prey can run, but it can't hide. So in murky coastal waters, the dolphins can hunt with ease. Sometimes they work together to drive fish into the shallows and can use bursts of sound to panic them. The pelicans know to hang around as the dolphins tighten their trap, driving the fish to the surface. The dolphins might even use sound as a weapon, stunning the fish by blasting clicks at them. It doesn't take long to pick off the shoal. With their sixth sense, dolphins can probe anything they come across. With their curious nature, found objects can quickly become toys as the intelligent animals play. Dolphins are legendary for their apparent desire to play with humans. And people too can be probed with sound, the dolphin creating a complex mental image of their friend's organs. They can probably get a good idea of our health using sonar. It's hard to keep secrets from friends, and the dolphin quickly becomes aware of a camera hidden beneath a thick wetsuit. All toothed whales and dolphins possess sonar. In the frigid waters of the Arctic, it's especially important to beluga whales. They have the most mobile necks and flexible melons to pulse their sounds. They need them to navigate under ice flows and locate breathing holes in the potentially lethal ice. Beluga are sometimes known as the canaries of the sea for their haunting repertoire. While some animals have learned to use sounds as weapons, others use it to stay safe. 
Guanaco, the wild ancestors of llamas, roam the Andes in South America. While their herd members are grazing, a sentinel stands guard, its keen eyes looking for any sign of movement. The mountains can be a dangerous place. A puma is on the prowl. It's a deadly threat, but only if it can take the herd by surprise. The big cat's busted. An alarm call ripples through the herd. With all eyes on him, the puma has no chance of a successful hunt. Most sounds in nature are vocalization, the calls of animals. But how did the hummingbird get its name? It certainly doesn't hum. But when this female is on the move, there is a constant buzz from air vibrating over her feathers. It's the frequency of the wing beats that determine the frequency of the sound. And she can beat her wings up to 90 times a second. So fast that she can stay motionless in the air or move in any direction, even backwards, just like a miniature helicopter. A simple ball and socket joint and short stiff wings allow the wings to turn in a figure of eight and exploit the uplift created by every direction of wing stroke. The sound is a side effect. The precision flying can allow for delicate nectar sipping on the wing. And then for an even more delicate maneuver, the food must be transferred beak to beak. With a long, sharp beak, the mother can't afford to slip, sword swallowing at its finest. Apart from the occasional bleat, mouflon, or wild sheep, don't make much sound. That is, until their breeding season. Now they dabble with percussion. hormone fueled, the rams have been strutting around, sizing each other up. But now it's time they used their heads. The sheath over the horn, made up of a fingernail-like substance, cushions the blow creating the hollow thud. Air sacs inside the skull are like car airbags to protect their brains from the impact. Some species of sheep can collide with 800 kilos of force. Winner takes all, or tries to. Another specialist in percussion is the woodpecker.
But when it's not drumming out tunes with its beak, it's answering to the endless calls of its chicks. Baby birds have unique calls to beg for food, an incessant din that the parents can't ignore. The calling and the feeding never stop. For baby birds to find their voice is essential, especially for those who nest in colonies. Guillemots all look pretty similar, and they like to hang out in a crowd, which can make it pretty easy to get lost. Every day, parent birds must make their way out to sea to hunt. Showing their likeness to penguins as they dive to catch shoaling fish, literally flying through the water. But then they must return with fish and locate each other and their chick. And the way they do that is sound. Even among hundreds of other shouting birds, they can recognize tiny variations to locate individuals. Recognition doesn't always prevent ownership disputes. Birds also chat to one another in flocks. Constant tweeting is a way of saying, I'm here and I'm okay. If everyone's chatting, then things are fine and everyone can go about their business. If the sounds change, then it's time to panic. Geese and other migratory birds use the din to keep the flock together over their epic journeys. Families can even stay in contact in the middle of thousands of honking birds. When cranes arrive on their wintering grounds, they can celebrate the end of their journey and reaffirm the bonds with their partners. The singing and dancing will intensify towards the end of winter as the birds ready themselves for the breeding season ahead. Territoriality becomes the purpose of war cries for some whooper swans. One pair has claimed this lake. They yell at trespassers. But the warnings are ignored. Not all disputes can be talked out. Occasionally, actions speak louder than words.
sounds can divide or conquer. Wolves are the epitome of wildness. Considered by some to be fierce and dangerous. But wolves share close and loyal family bonds and they use sound, their haunting songs, to bring together and consolidate their pack. We often think we are special because of our desire to communicate. We see language as a human trait. But when you listen, animals have a lot to say. Many birds, particularly big-brained ravens, have many words in their well-developed language to describe a threat or guide others to a food source. Their communication is so complex that they can inform others of the movements of wolves. Knowing the powerful pack hunters might be able to spare a few scraps of food. Humans. We like to think we're special. But perhaps it's animals who will have the last word. <laughs>